Hello everyone. Wherever you are viewing this from any part of the world, I say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I welcome you to this YouTube channel. And today I want to show us how we can configure VPLS on our network. And um, a prerequisite for VPLS to work is that you must first have a MPLS working on your network. And um, a video has been done with respect to that. So you can um, check our past videos or click on the link being displayed on your screen at the moment to see how you can configure or learn how you can configure MPLS on your network. VPLS is one of the features of um, MPLS and it is a layer 2 tunneling protocol which um, permits um, users to communicate over Ethernet links irrespective of their geographical location and then um, like I said earlier to have VPLS running on your network ensure that MPLS is running on the core and for this uh, topology our core devices are POP1, POP2, 3, 4 and 5 and um, we are going to run the VPLS between POP5 and POP2 and then uh, POP5 and POP3 because uh, we have a client that is um, requesting the service and then uh, this router the one designated as the HQ is um, at the headquarters of, of the client while these are the branches that is branch 1 and branch 2 so let's start from POP5 on um, how we can configure MPLS on uh, I mean how we can configure VPLS on our MPLS network so to do that launching our winbox go to the mpls menu and click on um, vpls click on add so the parameters we are going to configure here are the name the remote pair and the vpls id for the name we can give it uh, the name of our client let's assume the client is a uh, bow incorporated uh, the HQ and the remote pair since we are starting from um, up to we will use the loopback at this address that use the loopback address as your remote pair and it is reachable because already have OSPF running on your core network we also have a video now you can configure OSPF on a micro tick router so the vpls id this is another parameter and we can take that one as a one colon one being the first uh, connection that we want to establish so it must be the same to the um, connecting device as well that is it must be one dot one on pop two so with these basic parameters you can set up a vpls but the tunnel is not active because we have not uh, configured the remote aspect. Apply, okay. Then the next step is to create a VPLS bridge. So you can label it. This majority of the configuration will be done on the core. The clients just need to do a uh, most minimal configuration. So VPLS bridge. And um, I like putting my STP to be known since I'm not running VLAN. Then now add ports. The ports you are going to add the physical ports. It can be physical and it can be a VLAN port. And you are going to add these ports and um, the VPLS interface that you have created. So add. Yes, it has turned into which bridge? To this bridge. Apply. Okay. And the VPLS interface that was created soon. Don't remember to add it to the VPLS bridge for this client. So go to the remote end, which is POP2, and repeat the same process. So MPLS menu, VPLS, and click on add and supply the name. I call it VPLS. Um, Bow 
one to represent branch one then the remote sphere that will be the loopback address of port 5 then the VBLS ID remember is 1 colon 1 then apply ok so you can see that it is running already don't forget to create the bridge as well to have the tunnel bridge um, let me confirm the name VPLS by one for the interface the VPLS bridge one then add ports to the created bridge don't forget if this is ETA 10 then the bridge the VPLS bridge and add the interface it might be a physical interface it can be a VLAN interface to seal VPLS so we have created a tunnel a VPLS tunnel between POP5 and pop two so the next step now is to is for the client to do an end-to-end -end, um, test and by that they can create an ip and one point i wanted to add is that vpls is like you are creating a virtual a virtual switch inside the physical switch in other words the ends that are connected together are in the same broadcast domain so depending on how you want to um, design your network you can make the hq to serve as a gcp server while the other points will be the gcp clients but you can manually configure the ip on the interfaces so if i go to the hq device the hq device From there, I can uh, apply an IP to the interface that is connecting to the. Let me say, end of ten, of ten, of one. And it's ten. This is in in MPLS terminology. We call this customer device CE, customer equipment, and the device that the customer is connected to at the service providers and is known as a PE. That's the provider's edge. Other routers that are connecting to the that are in the core but we don't have a client connected to them is known as P, that's the provider's router. So apply OK. And I go to the branch one. I can apply 10 or 10 or 10 or 2 slash 24. So if I ping the HQ from the new terminal, it is supposed to respond. So this is how you set up a VPLS tunnel between two endpoints on an MPLS network. So I want to give us a challenge to set up a VPLS tunnel between POP5 and POP3 and ensure that uh, the HQ can communicate with branch 2. Thank you very much. If you have any comments, any questions, you can hit us up on the comment section. I also want to appeal to you that kindly like, subscribe and share our videos. We are also available for consulta consultancy services for network setups, troubleshooting, maintenance, upgrade and the likes. We are also into UI slash UX design 
website design, mobile application design, general IT. We are, we are like a full package, a whole package. So we expecting to hear from you. Thank you. See you in our future videos.